gone was the ability to study the philosophy of Plato and Aristotle, the engineering wonders of Archimedes, or the geom geometry of Euclid. Lost, too, was any accurate system of financial accounting. Gone was the ability to mark and tell time, to create calendars, to organize and orchestrate just daily life. But while the Christian Western world was lost in the dark, the Muslim world was ablaze with light, art, substance, science, and economic splendor. The golden age of Muslim empire was huge in its geographic scope and stretched from the western edge of India through the Middle East, up to Armenia, down through northern Africa, and to the eastern edge of Spain. This great Muslim empire was forward-thinking, enlightened, and filled with the spirit of inquiry. And Baghdad, in what is now called Iraq, was its intellectual epicenter. As recounted in the PBS documentary, Islam, Empire of Faith, Baghdad, in its glory, rivaled Athens or Rome. Architecturally, it was a marvel, with exquisite neighborhoods covered with parks, gardens, villas, and beautiful promenades. From the 8th century on, Baghdad was the center of learning in the Islamic world, and we could say Baghdad was the center of learning in the entire world. All major innovations either came from Baghdad or quickly came to Baghdad because the best people came to Baghdad, the best thinkers, the best philosophers, the best artists. And at the center of all this creativity and culture stood the House of Wisdom, a research institute and library. The House of Wisdom was a magnet for scholars and intellectuals, where all different threads of human knowledge came together. The Arabs sought out learning wherever it could be found. Scholars were dispatched across the empire to locate as many ancient texts as possible. It was the first international scientific venture in history. Unlike their Christian counterparts, Muslim thinkers saw no insurmountable conflict between their faith and the laws governing the natural world. So they embraced Aristotle and Plato writers the Christian church considered blasphemous. The Arabs translated and transformed the philosophic and scientific writing of the Greeks. The PBS documentary posits that the Arabs did more than just preserve the classical past. They stretched it towards a modern future. Having amassed knowledge, they began to challenge it, to probe it, to explore it. The Arabs gave birth to the scientific method. Algebra and trigonometry, engineering and astronomy, mathematical concepts such as the invention of zero, geography, cartography, which is the science of map making, and countless other discoveries integral to our lives today trace their roots to these Islamic scientists. At a time when the Europeans were praying to the bones of their saints to cure their illnesses, Muslim physicians developed an innovative theory that disease was transported through tiny airborne organisms, a precursor to the study of germs. They determined that sick patients should be quarantined and then treated. This is the basis of the institution fundamental to our medicine today, the hospital. Funded mainly by religious endowments, Muslim hospitals had separate wards for patients suffering from different kinds of diseases. Even mental illness was treated. Islamic studies of anatomy were so sophisticated that they remained in use by Muslim and European physicians for over 600 years. 1,000 years before the West dared to take up the practice Muslim doctors were removing cataracts surgically. But all this knowledge to transform and illuminate had to be copied and shared. It was the Arabs who took the Chinese invention of paper 
and shared it throughout the world. More importantly, paper enabled Islamic civilization to spread its newfound knowledge far and wide, creating a single community linking three continents. Paper allowed Arab knowledge to unify the world. Over time, Christian Europe was able to take in these learnings from the Arab world and slowly, slowly drag itself out of its Western dark ages. Author Jonathan Lyons writes, how many among us today stop to acknowledge our enormous debt to the Arabs? How many recognize their invaluable bequest? The power of Arab learning refashioned Europe's intellectual landscape. It shaped the groundbreaking work of Copernicus and Galileo, bringing Christian Europe face to face with the fact that the sun and not the earth stood at the center of the solar system. Modernity was born because of the Muslims. The European Renaissance that shook off the dark ages, the intellectual enlightenment that challenged the crippling control of the Catholic Church, the rise of rational thinking and scientific inquiry that gave birth to our European Unitarian and Universalist forebears all harkens back to the golden age of Islam. We exist as Unitarian Universalists today because of the Muslims who protected a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. When we forget our history, when we forget where we've come from, when we forget the footprints we followed to get to where we are today, it is as if a great winter storm has covered up the foundations and the formulations of life. When we forget that ours is not the only story on the planet, it is as if ice has coated our ability to see the truth when we forget that we are not self-created, we have inextricably lost our capacity to face the challenges put forth by the future. As Unitarian Universalists, let's not lose our sense of reason to the West's winter of discontent. As Unitarian Universalists, Let's not lose our memory to America's collective amnesia regarding the Muslim world. As Unitarian Universalists, we must be a people in whom the past endures, in whom the present is inconceivable without moments gone by. That is why we can light a menorah, sing Silent Night, and talk about Islam in all the same service. Because our Unitarian Universalist faith tells us this, the Jewish miracle of light, the Christian promise of a holy night, and the Muslim intellectual insight are all part of the great spirit of life, a living, evolving, transforming spirit that yearns to guide our way on. May it be so. Assalam alaikum. Shalom. Peace be unto you.